Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks so much for tuning in to today's Roadmap to Modernization Summit. I'm Anna Pettigen, Senior Vice President of Programs here at GovExec, and I'm excited to continue today's conversation on modernization initiatives with our elite underwriter at Lidos. Today, we'll be discussing digital modernization across enterprise IT environments, and we'll also focus on some of the initiatives that Lidos is implementing to help their customers across federal, state, and local agencies manage and maintain their key IT services. I'm excited to be joined in this conversation by two experts, Kevin Chen, Director of Artificial Intelligence for IT, Modern, uh, IT Operations, and Tiffany O'Brien, Chief Engineer of the AI and Machine Learning Accelerator, both at Lidos. Let's go ahead and get started. I'd love for each of you to tell us a little bit more about yourself, your background, and your role at Lidos. Thanks, Anna. So first off, I want to say thank you for having us here. I'm really excited to be talking to you guys. Um, so my background is... I am a software engineer, system engineer by education. I uh, had a lot of hands-on roles as cloud engineer working through in our customers' um, IT environments and also a solution architect. Um, as a solution architect, being able to provide that technical leadership, that technical architecture to our customers uh, and working directly with the CIOs um, to run their enterprise IT environments for their missions. And uh, now I'm in the role as uh, director of AI ops here at Lidos. I'm looking to use that experience to infuse innovation into these customer environments. So Tiffany O'Brien, um, as a computer scientist, I've been developing algorithms for our government and commercial end users that range from like models of aircraft fuel burn to using Twitter to predict cyber attack events. Um, within Lidos's AI and machine learning accelerator, I work with a team of data scientists that develop uh, predictive analytics over a number of different domains and most recently been working to um, develop these analytics to be able to improve our IT network operations through AI ops. Great. So just to dive right into our question here, what are some of the biggest challenges in today's complex heterogeneous IT environments? And curious as a follow-up, how can analytics help? Okay. Um, so let me ask you this uh, in the audience. Have you guys ever visited a website or clicked on a link and you expected a response and you got a spinning globe, right? Um, that is a very frustrating experience for an end user, uh, we recognize. But equally, it's very frustrating uh, for the IT operator who's running the IT enterprise. They absolutely do not want that to happen. And it's frustrating because these IT operators, uh, when something happens that causes that service disruption, they don't know where to begin. Um, and they don't know if they've seen this before, have we experienced that stuff? Um, and are there several alerts? Are they all one of the same event? Um, and so that, why is that the case? I need to paint you a picture of what the IT operator is looking at. They've probably got a screen full of different tools running, lots of different windows, the tools are showing notifications uh, such as red, yellow, green stoplight charts, blinking lights on the overall healthy environment. If they start seeing reds, they may see multiple of them. In the meantime, they probably got email running, emails very, and they got a constant info of email. And then they got many other tools they're sending. So all these things are blinking and they don't know if they're all the same. That's very frustrating and they know it's impacting the end user. Um, so the bottom line is some of the problems is that when something happens, it's urgent. I need a lot of team to go figure out what's going on. I need to identify that root cause quickly. And you asked um, how analytics can help. So to address Kevin's operator's problems, what we can do with analytics is detect the problems faster so someone can address them more quickly. We can, for example, find the root cause and select that root cause out of a whole host of related uh, issues and alerts that are going on at the same time. And then finally, what we really want to aim for is being able to predict problems before they even happen so we can fix them proactively before they even impact that final end user. Great. Thank you both. Um, what are some of the tangible benefits to AI and ML imp implementation? And then I'll have a follow-up question there too. So Sorry. I would say AI and machine learning can improve the availability of these services that we depend on in our business and in our normal lives as well. And it's um, both 
sort of internally to that our, our IT network, as well as external services for purchasing and deliveries and communication. Um, if we can make it more available and have lower amount of downtimes and also faster responsiveness, then that means everybody's more productive and then things just move better and we can we can deal we can handle more more events every day. So Tiffany, you're saying that whether I'm a consumer or um, you know on the mission, if I'm shopping on Amazon and I hit that <laughs> hit that button, I want to rest assured that signal went uh, through, as well as in our customers, federal and um, all of our customers' environments when they're operating their mission, and there's got to be a communication from point A to point B. They they want that assurance that that service is up front, right? Um, so that. I would add to that um, some of the benefits from an IT operator perspective is the, the time and the amount of human labor that has to go into the triage to find that root cause. When something happens, one IT operator doesn't know all the things. So they have to gather a team, get on a call, get in a tiger team, and get everyone's perspectives, functional perspectives from like networks, from servers, from databases to even find that root cause. So we're really excited to think that uh, the AI ops and the AI ML uh, can give us that root cause quicker. Great, so um, that's a good segue. segue. Um, when examining best practices and implementation of AI ops, how do you measure success? And is, is success something you can quantify? Um, I think we, I'll be able to quantify by me, making sure to reduce the number of false alarms. Uh, so that way as my IT operations teams across the enterprise, if they get these influx of alerts and notifications and um, we don't know if they're real or not because a lot of the monitoring tools today are threshold based. If it kicks off a threshold, they, I'm gonna get an alarm. I don't know if that's really gonna cause a service disruption or not. So being able to reduce the false alarms is a really big deal. Um, the AIML uh, is helping reduce the force uh, false alarms and doing the triage is really a force and multiplier. That's a good point. And when it comes to, you asked about, you know, how do we measure these things quantitatively? I'll say we can use our traditional IT ops um, key performance indicators, our KPIs, such as, you know, mean time to repair and time to triage, you know, whether some, a, a problem is caused internally or by some external loss in a system. Um, but as we move toward more proactive and uh, machine learning and AI-based um, uh, predictions of problems before they even actually impact an end user, then we're gonna start wanting to quantify uh, how many issues were raised auto through an automated system and fixed before they even resulted in a ticket at the very end. And that's sort of the exciting place we're gonna go. Great. Similarly, what are some best practices to lead a team in developing these types of technologies? Um, I'll, I'll start, I guess. Uh... Some of the best practices we've learned is really focus on the business process in the use cases, right? Um, there's a lot of tools out there, uh, monitoring tools that a lot of customers have been investing in. But be, and some of those tools are domain agnostic versus domain specific. What I mean is domain specific, you may have network specific monitoring tools versus endpoint monitoring tools. And then domain agnostic could be your uh, service tickets that are that correlate all that data together, but um, really focusing on in on customer use cases and their business problems. I think that is really where to start and really how do you get AI ops. I totally agree, but I want to add another important piece. I believe this is. I just want to stress the importance of deploying a really strong uh, data management platform because the analytics um, that we deploy are data-driven. So you need that platform and infrastructure that actually collects all the data together and then makes it available for the analytics, working together then with things like software-defined networking or software-defined environments where you're doing automated provisioning and automated configuration. And then those three things work together to really make AI ops successful and impactful. Yeah, each of our customers have um, you know, a, a plethora of data, so being able to uh, not one customer may have the same uh, consistent approach or how they aggregate the data. So let's focus on that, so, on that data management platform. That's the important thing. Great. 
And then when implementing AI ops, what aspects does Lidos really focus on to achieve success? So we've been developing deep analytics. And by that, I mean smarter anomaly detection, for example, that's looking at the underlying problems and finding those problems instead of just alerting on the symptoms that happen later and further down the line. We've also been applying causal analysis to be able to predict the impact of changes that it senses within the system and be able again to say, you know, there's, we're predicting that uh, a problem's coming up soon. So let's, uh, let's do something early. We've been uh, using our trusted AI approach to be able to give end users that insight they need into how the analytics function so that they know whether to trust and how much to trust the recommendations that it's making. So this is, you know, making it more explainable, uh, making it more transparent as to you know, what's actually going on and what, what's underlying the technology. And then finally, um, we've also been uh, implementing methods to be able to have the analytics adapt to changes in the data. Uh, you know, just as changes in the data over time as the system grows and changes. So you keep that same level of performance and you give you know, our kind of customers that really care about security and reliability, that kind of assurance they need to be able to trust. The AI we give them. Yeah, that, that trusted AI um, is really important for the IT operator because we want to make sure that the customer environments they don't um, and and with dispel the notion that AI ML is going to go out there and just do automated tasking. Right, it's a combination of the analytic and the IT automation that's important. But um, to add to that, uh, Tiffany, um, Lidos. We really engage with a lot of different customers um, and that we have a lot of contracts across all different spaces, but we also really are engaged with a lot of vendors and suppliers and we have a lot of special relationships. And, and the combination of all that is really important. Um, as I said before, we gotta focus on the business use case and understanding uh, that those customer problems and be able to mature AI ops within those customer environments. So no, having those, strategic supplier relationships and understand the customer intimacy is allows us to really focus in on those customer and solve those customer problems. Um, and we're doing that actually, uh, um, Tiffany and I are working together and we're actually working to deploy AI ops and mature uh, use of AI ML in the IT operational environment um, by deploying these in the customer spaces. Awesome. Well, that's all the time we have today. Uh, Kevin and Tiffany, thank you both so much. It was so great to have both of your perspectives from both the IT ops side as well as the AI ML uh, lens. So thank you again for participating and thank you to Lidos for sponsoring this event today. Um, now back to the rest of the program.